Hi right, everyone, it's Adam Seven Fish Tanks, and guess where we are today? <laughs> we're near JT's garage right here, um, having a little look at his business, and we're going to be asking some questions to the. <laughs> I'll leave that in. Some questions today about uh, how you started all this, how you maintain it, and your point and view in the hobby. And obviously, yeah. you're really young too, so like your yeah. information that you've got in your head is like so broad and. Again, you're able to teach people things and stuff like that, so yeah, yeah. let's uh, get into it. Anyways, uh, talk me through everything to uh, right. where do we want to begin? I think we'll start well, here at the discus rack, I guess. Yeah. Basically, well, at least the top row is discus. Okay. Uh, starting over here with my discus pair, Neo and Nova. So the orange one is the male, his name's Neo. It's beautiful. And then the female, Nova. Um, they actually have eggs right now, as you can maybe see if they are not in front of it, but... We're about... Yeah, just on the pole... On the pole there? The, oh. Right where the male is, but um, they're tiny little orange eggs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if the camera will pick it I up. I don't think the camera... Oh, yeah. Maybe, yeah, I can see them slightly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah he was guarding them off, obviously. Yeah. Big air. Uh, dinner plate garden yeah, off there. Yeah, definitely. And then, well, these eventually turn into something like this. Yep. And then into that eventually. And then, well, that has to turn into something even bigger. Are these the so offspring? That's or? all the offspring. Indeed. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, still just growing out. And I think I want to keep the ones here on the right and then maybe sell these. Okay. But I have to see what uh, fits best. It's also interesting to see the different colors so you got like the, yeah. these will be orange full orange yeah and this one has like some kind of pattern coming through yeah, like a mix yeah so it's it's going to be interesting to see i'm not uh, all too clued up with the different names for discus i know that there is wild and i think the wild are a lot more browner and stuff like that as well yeah uh, but... um so these are like so you got like german type discus so like your stenkers and stuff like this yeah these are from asia so like um okay. i think a Breeders Jackson Kayong, his name is, or something like that, and some Asian breeders. These are all from like the Asian breeders. Yeah. Um, because I know from the guy that I got. Why well, I, I bought a big group and then these paired off. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yeah, they, they they do well. I might want to narrow down one day, one one day to like some special types, so maybe some stenkers or yeah, you yeah. know, like some color strains. How how long have you had this pair then? Um, about uh, about three years, I think. Yeah, about three years. Okay. Um. How yeah. wait, How big were they? Were they like around this size they were then? Around, I would yeah, I would say actually around this size, maybe a little smaller. I had a group of twenty actually, oh, and wow. I had them in. So I had ten in here, ten in there, and then I had some. Well, I had this pair pair off. Yeah. Well, no, actually, it wasn't this pair that paired off. It was that female that started laying eggs randomly. Yeah. And there was no male with it at the moment but then he thought i'll take my chance and pair up <laughs> and the thing with this is they pair up for life so ah, they'll be okay, together so forever now you can't just separate no, them well now. you could I, you could separate them but there's actually a chance that one they'll die if you separate them oh, because wow. they really are that bond to each other so the heartbreak um, yeah yeah that's Damn. you know tell so. me um, a little bit of down here then so down here it's a bit of a mixed match right now. Mm -hmm. um, these are all, actually all the angels are kind of bred myself, um, except, yeah, actually this one also. So all of them are bred here. Um, but this is actually still a male left and he is the father of most of these. Not all of them actually. Oh, prolific, most okay. <laughs> um, but I've bred in my time keeping fish, uh, yeah, keeping fish, I've bred like over a thousand angels, I think. Wow. Like so many. I had all these tanks were full of angels. I had an angel pair up there. Yeah. So I hardly had any. That's before I had discus. And, um, but now I've like narrowed down a bit. I don't have a pair at the moment. Although in my community tank, I do have a pair that paired up. And I've got some eggs, which over there, we'll get to that in a bit, I think. Okay. Um, but, you know, the angels, I just sell them. Like they sell all right sometimes. Like you can see the ones that are a bit duller color stay yeah. left behind. Like add a lot of the koi types. Yeah. Um, those sold really well, but then like these types are a bit less. Would, 
would you say angels are like a popular fish in the Netherlands then or? I would say angels are quite common here in the Netherlands. Yeah. Um, I would say, I mean, you do have to have like a bigger type tank for them. Yeah. So that is one thing. But generally speaking, yeah, they're quite popular, I would say, yeah. yeah. Okay. What would you say is like the fish in the Netherlands that's the most popular at the minute that people are like breeding or going Ooh, after? That's a good one. Um, like a demand that people have asked for from yourself maybe I, I think a lot of people now I mean you've got different levels of fish keepers of course you've got beginners who have just gotten into the hobby they would just standard stuff that I've got basically all over there um, but then you've got also like more experienced that are really looking for the rarer type fish mm -hmm. also a lot of people do want discus discus are more definitely getting more popular like if I were to sell these I'd like I would have sold them in like a couple of like an, a few hours. How like, much would like an adult discus go for? So around here, um, so if you'd have like this pair, a proven pair, you could easily get about five hundred euros. Wow. I would say, which um, you know in dollars is nowadays around the same. Yeah, um, yeah. Maybe a little more, but uh, but I would say usually they get sold around you know this size ish. And then they'll start in shops around 30, 40 euros each. Okay. And they can go up to, well, in the hundreds, really. So. Well, it's usually like, if you've got a proven pair, it's, then it's straight away. Yeah. yeah, yeah that's yeah, where yeah. the money is. Yeah. So tell me about it. Obviously, uh, the, there is two plecos oh, yeah. in each we've one. Got, so we've got, in here, we've got the common Brissonos plecos. So just the standard brown ones. Got a big male here. Yeah. Um, and then some females in there, they breed constantly. And then here, well, he just went to the back, but we've got a male albino one, and then also a female at the back. Can, yeah, there. I can see the female there. You the can see the male just peeking through slightly. Might have to, yeah. Yeah. But, so they breed some, yeah, they breed all right. And they're also quite a popular one, I've got to say. Not okay. too bad. But sometimes you have so many, you can't get rid of them because people yeah they're, they're, they're a fish that will always be available kind of thing yeah. so they can go anywhere for yeah. them so i've been looking to get more of the special like the albinos will sell way quicker than the normals yes so maybe i'll get some like i do have still a red male which is in that tank over there oh, just okay. under the wood oh uh, yeah i can there. see him so that's a red male uh that i grew up from a baby oh wow but, okay uh, how old is he would you say Ooh, good couple of months maybe even a year uh, yeah around a year i would say okay so, dokes you've got uh, i still have some guramis these are just to, s to sell um i basically moved them here because i didn't have enough space over there so i had more space here for them so that would be better and i've got the um uh, the clown loaches yeah which are really cool fish i only have two left at the moment i had like 12 but i sold a bunch so We'll have those in soon again, but they are really cool fish. I'm, I think they they're quite underrated, but you need to have a big tank. That's back home. The the very popular to be yeah. fair, and like uh, they always sell out, especially the larger ones because again you can only get big clown loaches yeah. most of the time when they're yeah, yeah. wild caught. Yeah. Um, anything of this size is usually yeah. tank bred or yeah. from a yeah exactly supplier. Yeah. And um, what's here down here? Just plant storage. Oh here, yeah. So when I was going through and cleaning these out yesterday, I had so much Java fern. So most of it I had to chuck away, but I thought, you know, I'll just put this under here um, because it doesn't need much light and just chuck it in there. It's better to save it and maybe sell it or whatever or use an escape. So I just thought, chuck it in there and then it'll be fine. And I just, I can never get myself to throw away plants. That's, yeah. That's my issue. Yeah. But yesterday I did have to, and I'll explain that a bit later on. But, no problem. Um, yeah. And uh, you were describing to me earlier about like the system, like how's all this um, yeah, going so together? Yeah, so basically, well, I have one air pump uh, going to all the tanks here. So that's, yeah. I have sponge filters in each tank, which worked really well, to be honest. Uh, no issues there. Then, well, I have heaters in both the outside tanks. So the middle tank just gets heated by those. Um, it saves a little bit on energy costs. And then to drain these is really simple. I have a pipe in there, and then that pipe uh, just goes down here, and then mm -hmm. there's some valves there, and I can open them, and then there is a hose that goes outside to a drain. 
Yeah. So I can drain one of these tanks in like thirty seconds. That's you know. Yeah. Very good. Like, yeah. Very like good really, and handy for maintenance really for sure. Um, and then filling up is also really simple. So I have like a uh, whole hose splitty thing here, and that just goes to the tap. Um, but then here I can select which one I want, open it up, and then there's literally just a uh, simple hose here, you know, that I can just put in the tank and then uh, fill the tank up. And that's, that's just really simple. Nice Filling the tank up takes way longer than training, but... Uh, so like, how long actively have you been running as a business? Um, well, officially I've been a business since the summer, actually exactly a year now that I've officially been a business. Yeah. So, but before then I've already kind of been, you know, selling and breeding and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I would say since I was about 12, so that's at least five years ago. I've been like act actively breeding and selling fish. That's super um, impressive. And then before that, I've just been keeping fish, of course. Like, but um, yeah, I think that's yeah, that's about that's about right. Yeah. Right. Let's uh, move on to yeah. this section anyway. Just a little uh, tease of the sticker yeah, there. Sticker. <laughs> also, uh, a towel from uh, a main yeah. yeah, that's always nice. <laughs> um, so this is actually. This was actually built as a kind of shrimp rack or like shrimp system. Yeah. And this was built for like a shop. Like all these tanks are meant to be in real shops, um, which I am kind of, but they used to be like in shops. In an actual shop, yeah. In yeah. an actual shop. Um, but I could get them like second hand. Um, and the same story with this. This was like specific built for that. Uh, really nice it is. So it's one big tank, yet it's in five little compartments. And then in the back here is like a, kind of like a, yeah, how, how would you call it? Not a sump, but like a, a little back space where there's a pump that runs then to all the tanks. And then water flow, fr flows through there, through the sponges and gets filtered like that. Mm -hmm. um, and you can throw anything in the back you want, really. Uh, but it's really nice because, you know, I can have different types of, now I'm keeping nano fish in here. Um, also, I have a better fish in each compartment, which is quite nice. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I did actually, I started using it, when I got it, I used it for like different types of shrimp and like some guppies and breeding that. Mm -hmm. But now this is just easier and I can like relatively keep a lot of fish in here, like in quite a small space because they're all nano fish. So that's quite nice and um, yeah. Great, well uh, talk me through each tank anyway. Um, so over here we've got, well like I said, we've got a better fish of course, a crown tail better fish. Uh, we've got the Boraros maculatus in here, which are these tiny little rasboras, which are quite popular. Mm -hmm. um, also coolie loaches in the bottom, there's quite a few Skinny in there. Skinny noodles. Yeah, yeah skinny noodles. <laughs> um, that's that tank. Then over here we've got a bunch of CPDs, since they are really popular actually. Um, are they really popular like locally yeah yeah i would say i sell them and the nice thing is they are quite expensive mm -hmm. um and then people still want them so they're in high demand and expensive fish means a lot of profits of course so it'd be I, stupid for me not to have them i have noticed you've got some frederin rainbows i think that's a very yes. underrated fish yeah. that people so need I, to know of i have only two left i think i used to have more but i sold a bunch yeah but they are really cool fish i've got to say um yeah they uh the official or their scientific name is iria terina yeah um yeah they are really underrated fish and they can be really lovely in a nice little group it's beautiful i used to keep them um, in a group just the two males but a lot of females the females are not so great but the males when they start displaying and opening yeah. up the fins it's something extraordinary yeah. i think for yeah, sure yeah. no they are really nice so i i might they haven't been in stock lately so once they're in stock i might get them back in but but they're again they're not that popular so i don't sell that many so for me it's also like yes i want to keep rare fish and like fish that are not so popular but yeah if they don't get sold then they kind of in my space sitting and doing nothing and they're holding up space where another fish could go exactly, exactly. i yeah. was i was speaking to um andy from something fishy in the wirral uh, i think it's uh 
Greasby or something like that. Yeah. And um, he was basically saying that he loves to get rare stuff in, but it doesn't sell. There's only yeah. beginners coming yeah. into the shop. and yeah, that's the thing. It's one of them. You just want something that looks colourful straight exactly. away. A yeah. lot of fish you've got to let sit for a while before yeah. they do colour up, yeah. so that's the issue Same with the hobby. With the rainbow fish we've got over here, we'll get to that in a bit, but I'll have, I've got a whole story on that. Um, yeah. But it is, I, I try to keep a little yeah mix of things that are standard and everybody wants, and then a few extra rare things that you might not see everywhere. Um, same with actually in this next tank, these rainbow fish. Oh, the Pseudogome. Yeah, Pseudogome. the Pseudomogil Gertrude eyes. Yes. Um, I mean, they are stunning fish. Very Eventually, much so. you know, they now still still a bit young, but once they get a bit older, the males get like really beautiful. Like a, a reddy orange yellow yeah, color. Yeah. It's a bright blue eye. Yeah. Uh, another fish again that I think is slowly gaining in popularity. Gaining, exactly. But I think it's going to be a while before we have more rainbow fish in the hobby yeah. as like a staple. I think. Yeah. No, definitely. You know. You're um, thinking of maybe breeding them. Well, eventually my plan is to expand a little bit. Um, now we've got mainly just selling fish, but I might want to expand to this side here. We've got some cabinets and some junk. Get yeah. that all out and put some tanks there just for breeding. Yeah. Um, that's so the plan. So breed shop, exactly. yeah. And then, so then I can self-sustain and then exactly, at that point. Exactly, so I can like supply my own shop. Yeah. Because um, with some things it's easy. Like these zebra daniels, for instance, I've bred tons of those before as well, so they're mm. really easy to breed. So I could easily do that and just supply my own things. Um, because, you know, but the issue is if you don't have it separated, which I used to have, I had like partly breeding my own fish and partly selling, then you of course had people come and they wanted to buy your breeding pairs or like, you know, your um, nicer specimens, which are yeah. your parents. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, but I can't sell you because I need to breed and... You need the stronger strain as well, exactly. of course, because you don't want any that's, interbreeding that's going on. Yeah. Well, what maybe not everybody knows, but if you go like to breeders, the fish that they sell are like, they are less good ones. Mm. Like they're still usually really good fish. But of course, they're not going to sell their pride. Like pride the, and joy, yeah. yeah it's like they, it's like giving someone your flat screen TV yeah. because it's slightly better than the one yeah. they got at home, yeah, exactly. and you're like, well, no, I don't want to give no, you that. No, no. So exactly. It's like, yeah, you know. Um, so that's also a thing here, really. But so if I can keep it separated, I'll be better. I think so. That's in the plans, in the makings, but you know, it's time and money that we have to have. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Well, I was speaking to you when I first came in earlier. This is a fish again that I think is slowly gaining popularity. Yeah. Um, the, the peacock, peacock gudgeon. gudgeon, yeah. yeah. So not many people are aware of this. Have you no. only got? The I've one only in got there? two, I think. Two. Um, and the reason, well, so what I actually had, I didn't even decide myself to order these fish, but I had a customer who was looking for these, um, and I said, you know, I can order them. So then I ordered them, and well, they bought a few, and a few left over. But they are actually really cool fish. Mm. Um, and then they actually came back and they wanted more of them. So I had to order them again. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they are really cool fish. But again, underrated. Um, oh, 100%. I think like for a nano setup as well, yeah. they're definitely a really good centerpiece yeah. fish that you can have in your yeah. tank. Yeah. Um, I've also seen as well a fish that I think deserves and it is slowly creeping up in popularity. Uh, the rosy loach there yes. as well. I think yeah. they 100% deserve a bit more popularity. Yeah, I, I, well, I saw these on the ordering system. I saw like, ah, oh, these are kind of cool and a bit different. And from the picture here, they look, you know, really nice. Um, so then I decided, you know, I'll just order them, see what they're like. I was expecting them to be a bit more like reddish, but mm -hmm. maybe they'll come with like time. I'm not sure. Um, but I thought I'll just try them, see what happens. Yeah. Um, I still have to get them up on the on the website and things like that, but that will come eventually. Yeah. Um, but yeah, really cool fish. And I think another underrated fish here actually is the uh, sp um, sparkling gourmet. Yeah. Because, yeah, because they are, um, you know, they are just really cool fish, and like they'll just all of a sudden make some noise. Yeah, the croaking noise. Exactly, and it's like. Where, and you think like where's that coming from and then you think oh that's that tiny fish making noise like it was, it also it was, when the um, they flare up and the colour the light the light hits the colour oh 
Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful yeah. fish. My, I got my cousin to get some because he's got a nano tank and he's got shrimp. Yeah. And obviously they will predate on the younger, maybe some of the smaller shrimp. But mm. he, it was night time, he said, and he was just chilling. And he just did that. And he was like, yeah. he thought someone was knocking on the window, a little croaking noise, yeah. 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 Oh, there you go. That's what, uh, that's what your chonker looks like. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. And nice CPD as well. Mm. Yeah. Um, no, so you know that, that's also a really cool fish, and there's actually so there's also keely fish in here, but they've been a bit shy. Ah, okay. So I'm not sure if you can. I don't even know where they are. Are they yeah. underneath the okay, nubius? Okay, there's a female here. Oh, there you go. That's a female, but females don't have color. What are what keely fish uh, are they? It's these, the striatum. Ah, okay. Um, really beautiful fish when they came in, but I, I just haven't seen them that much. I think they in the wood or something but you probably just find a pile of them somewhere yeah, yeah that's yeah. most likely so they i think they still have to get used because they only came in a couple of days ago so yeah of course you know, it's one of them sometimes. just got to give them some time of course yeah right um, yo uh, what next big system the big rack basically mm -hmm. um nine tank well 11 kind of but those are plant storage tanks mm -hmm. um where should we start maybe up here yeah um in here Basically, just an assortment of different fish. We've got like this paradise fish, mm -hmm. which are actually also pretty cool. It's a pair, I think. Not many people know about paradise no. fish at all. No. I think it's because, you know, when they think of cold water, they think of a goldfish, or maybe Daniel mm -hmm. slightly bought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, these can go in cold water as well, which is also pretty cool, you know. Um, but it also takes a bit long with them to get their color, so that's maybe an issue, you know? Yeah. Um, but anyway, really cool fish. Then I've got some zebra danios and some Colombian tetras with them. Yeah. Uh, again, these Colombian tetras are really cool fish, but they don't have much color like this in this setting. Yeah. If you put them in a planted tank. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're beautiful. Yeah, yeah. You, I actually, I don't know if they, this, yeah, they are. Look, I've got some adult ones in here. These are quite old, wow. I've got to say. They're, they're those are chunky. Chunky, yeah. But take a look at those fins and like... The angels are, don't want to be... I know. The angels, <laughs> the angels love being yeah. on camera. You can see there. And I call them mini piranhas because they are... Yeah, like, they, they literally are. I think that's the yeah. thing. Not many people know. Tetras and these skewing fish are basically what piranhas just yeah. without the big giant yeah, teeth. Because yeah, yeah. the all yeah. fish actually have min minuscule teeth as yeah, well. Yeah, no, exactly. So, yeah, those are really cool. I've just got... Um, um, some orange Bolivians back home as well. Oh yeah. So uh, you'll see that on my video. Oh, that's, yeah. that's come cool. out today, but I think it'll yeah. probably be a week from now that when this video comes out. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. The, the beautiful cool. Harry's cool. got some yourself, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Proper. Uh, yeah. The, the weird when you see them in the shop because there's no colour to them. They just like silver yeah. tetras, and then you yeah. have them for a week, and you're like, oh. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm. That's nice. Um, there's also some black neons in there, I just noticed. The staple, well. yeah. <laughs> yeah, just uh, You can throw a brick at them and they'll do well. <laughs> I know. Unless it's me, I somehow managed to kill them. Mm. Uh, again, like I said here yeah, on one of my lives, yeah. I managed to kill them the full assessor yeah. floor, yeah. which oh, yeah. to this no, day, nobody knows how I do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, 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 no, I don't. I <laughs> don't break me fish too often, like. <laughs> Just you know, rocks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, survival. Survival the fittest, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> uh, um, right. Anyway, over here. Okay. We've got cherry barbs, white cloud mountain minnows, and then we've got the glass catfish, which are also a really cool fish, actually. Are they popular here? Um, they actually, yeah, I would say they're quite popular and. I would say they are popular for younger kids. So kids who've got like aquariums, then they go to a shop, they see these, because they're like, oh look, I can see their bones and it's so cool, so they buy these. So I would say they're popular for that type of thing. Not really more, not really for the professional type aquarist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. For kids, they are quite popular. So I just have a couple in stock. Um, but. You know, pretty cool fish. Uh, it's one of them back home. They're not super popular. I think it's cause as well. They're quite a shy fish. If yeah. you haven't got an open uh, tank, they'll yeah. just hide. They will, yeah. And um, uh, not many people know as well. They are a skewing fish. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've seen videos where they have like a rainbow shimmer to them. I guess in like different types of lighting and stuff, mm. you can see those. Because the thing is, it's actually it is. Um, I had this. I heard this somewhere. You think it's transparent, which it looks transparent, but it is like 
clothes. Like, it's an actual... Like, if you take it out of the water, it's like a full body fish. Like, it's not like... It's strange, isn't there's it? There's nothing in between. There is stuff in between. So it's, yeah, yeah. It's, really, it's a really weird one. Yeah. Nature. Yeah. <laughs> it also shows, though, like, they are, all their organs and stomach and stuff is only that small part, and they've got that other big part of the fish that basically does n- not much. Mm. And I guess that's with most of the fish, like, say, these rummy nose tetras, you can kind of see as well. It's like really the head, and then a bit behind that is the most important part. And then the rest is just for swimming. So They're looking there nice and healthy. To yeah, so there. these are rummy nose tetras. Um, also, we've got some uh, dwarf gouramis, the uh, neon dwarf gouramis, which are also quite a cool fish. Got a rainbow uh, shark back there. And the rainbow sharks, indeed. I don't know, there was a quite a big one who came past. Did they not areas. pass the one another? Um, I haven't really... No, not too bad, I've got to say. Is it because um, they're juveniles, though, probably? Yeah, I think so, yeah. So, you'll sometimes see them chase each other, but um, it's not that big of an issue. Look, you can see the bigger one coming out now. Mm, showing who's boss. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so... But they are cool. One of them, I think uh, a lot of people uh, who are new into the hobby go, oh my God, it's a shark, and yeah, then they end up with this big chunky thing yeah, and go, oh, I can't is, handle this that anymore. The, that's usually what happens, yeah, for sure. It's the unfortunate thing, I guess. Yeah. But we'll move down to this yeah. one. Now, one thing I will say, by the way, I know that this is, like, it is now a business, etc., and yeah. it is in your garage, but, like, the fact that you've got, like, printed labels and, like, a system that's, like, running great as well, it's like mad impressive to me yeah. and again like i don't think many people will come in and go yeah. oh whatever but it's always good just to have that anyway and you've yeah. got all the details too as well yeah, which i think well it's actually so these are actually mandatory well they get so when i get new fish these get uh delivered so, with them ah. it's, it's like mandatory that those companies who deliver the fish do that yeah um so that's actually by law um, oh, wow, but okay. it is you know really useful because you can really quickly see temperature pH and you know sometimes these are indications sometimes because I usually say most fish nowadays can be in quite a wide range of pHs for example like mm. I mean you'll see like from five to seven I mean I would never go as low as five to be honest yeah yeah um, but you know most are in that range um, and then temperature yeah, so it's it's quite nice to see, and I what I like about it when I'm like um, trying to like say tell people about a fish, and I'm quickly like, oh wait, where was that fish from? I can just go here, oh yeah. South America, and it's just there. But back home, like a lot of places, they'll just write down the fish's name, mm-hmm. the price, and a lot of time as well. There's like a miscommunication on what the fish's actual yeah. name is. Yeah. So I remember when I bought the pandagora, it was listed yeah. as a rainbow pandagora, and it was yeah. just a mm-hmm. bog standard pandagora. Yeah. That's, so. yeah, no, because you got the official name, you got the common name, and then you've also got the size that it will get eventually, you know? Yeah. So, 5 to 6 centimeters, 10 to 15, so it's a really good indication of things that are, um, yeah, of what the fish needs. So. Yeah, okay, though, so... But anyway, rainbow fish here, um, uh, what I was going to say about these, like you can see now, they don't look too impressive, like the colors not that great but the thing is with rainbows it like it takes quite a while for them to color up and to get their colors and then once they're like adults they have their full colors and that's why in shops they usually just get passed on because people don't understand that they first have to grow and to get those colors um now the bosmanis usually have quite decent color so you can see those the orange ones but then these for instance hardly any and these blue ones kind of a little bit and also, they have the uh, best colors in the morning because that's when they usually typically breed. Yeah. Uh, and that's why they have their best colors then. And then, like, if you're visiting in an afternoon like this, you know, it's like sometimes the colors are a bit more dull. And that's why they, I think they're an underrated fish. They're, de- well. they're definitely a sleeper for sure because, yeah. like, not many people. Again, I was, I think, uh, Keith from Aquatic Fanatics, yeah. he was saying that. He um, saying he's, like yeah, he's keeping, yeah. like, a. a uh, rainbows now and it's starting yeah. to slowly pick up yeah. but uh, it's one of them again only yeah. the more experienced aquarist yeah. can to keep yeah. them fish no, definitely. Yeah. righty so female um, sorority slash yes, neon setup exactly 
uh, you can see some female betters. Um, you can see the more dominant, like this one here, like the or like the colors, you know, coming uh, yeah. through. And then the others are a bit less colorful. But uh, yeah, just a few better females because they were quite popular with people. Um, but yeah, it's just some. It's so weird with fish and selling fish. There's sometimes like peaks, and then everybody wants them, and then there's like, oh, nobody wants them, and you'll be stuck with a fish forever. Like yeah, um, yeah. So it's just it depends really, but got them with the standard neon tetras because everybody wants neons sometimes um also in all these tanks we've got cories so we've got albino cories on the bottom here yeah. um then your bronze Bronzes. cories and then Ju julia is is so Which, there's always this massive debate is this false julia yeah. is it whatever i yeah. it's it's a cory to me you know, it, um i've had people reach out to me say like those are tr the tri trilineatus and not the real julias because real julias look like blah, blah, blah. And then half the time they don't even know what they're talking about. And then I asked them like, okay, give me an example. And now I had one time somebody who actually sent me two pictures and this is like the difference. And I said like, okay, not much of a difference. Um, but they get sent to me as Juliized. You can see even on the label, mm -hmm. still people will say these are Trilliniatus or false Julias. And I'm like, you know, I don't really care. Most people that come here don't really care. They just keep them because they're cool. Yeah, look exactly. They look cool. And nobody really cares about if they're real or false Julia, so... I think I've even, like, seen the name Leopard Cory for them as well. Yeah, I think, yeah. I um, Well, in Dutch, they sometimes are called Laupart Corridoras, mm -hmm. which is leopard, translated to Leopard Cory. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, sometimes they are uh, named that here, actually. Um, but they're just a really cool fish, you know. And uh, Also, don't get, like, too big compared to these. You'll have some real chunky ones here sometimes. And the Julio's, I tend, you know, they stay a little smaller. Mm. Um, so that's also quite nice. Right, yo. Anyway, in with them, we've got some, um, why do I always forget the name? Harlequins? Those? Yes, Harlequins. Yeah. I always forget the name, I don't know why. Anyway, still, they're still quite young, but um, some nice Harlequins in there. Such a great school in fish, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, they school really well. Uh, together with the Remy Noses, these, if you have like a larger tank and a longer tank, they'll just follow each other around, which they, that's one of my favorites for sure. Um, but anyway, these are really cool too. And then I've got them with honey gouramis, which are always so shy for me. Like they always, almost always hide, um, yet they are a really beautiful fish. So sometimes they'll come out, but... I think it's one of them fish that like will do best probably in a planted tank. In a planted, planted yeah, tank, exactly. Because yeah. here it's like open and basic. Yeah. In a planted tank, they'll be they'll feel more comfortable. Um, so for sure. For Harry's sure. got some uh, breeding honeys, haven't you? Yeah. You've been breeding quite uh, well for you, haven't you? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Bit of pain in the neck for the rest of the tank, though, because it's going to get quite aggressive. Yeah. It, it's one of them, isn't it? It's one of the most peaceful fish you can keep on a suit. It's, again, I think it's the same for Crebenza. It's a very peaceful fish right. until as soon yeah. as they breed, then it's really? game over for the whole time. Weirdly really enough for them, I've actually found that sticking a platy in with them, mm -hmm. the platy actually goes and chases the male away. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's, this is like a type yeah, of dinner fish. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah, they are. Yeah. Very, I think a, a, peace, a peacekeeper, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the bouncer platy. Yeah. ITO, yeah. let's move down to here. See, so you've got quite a lot of rams. Quite a lot of, yeah, so quite a lot of German blue rams. You can mm -hmm. see them all here, you know. Um, they've been doing pretty well. Like, take a look at this male. He's, oh, he's, he's looking beautiful. nice, yeah. And these are still young, you know, because they'll get way bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, or not way bigger, but like more mature. Chunkier, chunkier, chunkier. yeah, like more. Um, you'll see in my community tank, I've got a beautiful pair. I, you probably saw the pictures I put on. Yeah, yeah. There. Um, anyway, he's like chunky, nice and beautiful, but they're doing pretty well here. Um, I just got them in with some Serpe Tetras and some Platys as well, and some um, uh, Algators. The, uh, the golden these, Chinese yeah, Algator, Chinese. yeah. They're actually Chinese indeed, not the Siamese, but I don't know why the name. Because I have Siamese Algators here too, but those are the ones with the, stri with the stripes. Oh, uh, okay. Um, so yeah how how are your rams holding up anyway because i would say I, I, a lot of people think i yeah. hate rams i don't hate them i just think i hate what what's happened to the strain of the yeah. fish it's like the quality well, has gone down i'm quite uh, well quite happy with like with my supply i get quite good quality rams yeah um 
sometimes you'll see like this one's a bit like in like the belly is a bit indented so yeah it can be like a bit trick but i haven't i rarely like lose one like rarely so they've been doing fine and i just feed them really good foods and see how they do and usually they do all right so that's quite nice that's good and the nice thing is i get them in young so i can all i could also technically buy them in as adults but i see like if i buy them in young i can grow them up myself i know what water parameters they've had the food and stuff like that you've got a bit more control yeah control on how they end up um eventually you know i'll just want to have breed them myself and they'll be the best of course but that will be in the future um i have bred them before actually so they're not they're not even that difficult to breed but it's flat surfaces really like pebbles or sleet and stuff like that yeah right yo and here we've just got some mollies just a mix of mollies really just because people want them i really don't care that much about mollies um although i did i used to have a beautiful strain of black mollies like the purest black you could find in a fish i'm not even kidding you and i had like people come around and said like those are really nice black mollies mm-hmm. and if i compare them to what they come in from the wholesale it's like nothing decent. compares no yeah, no um so but anyway i had to get rid of those in the end because i didn't have space and whatnot um but in with these i've actually got a really cool fish which is the L103. Um, really not expensive, really cheap actually. I oh, don't wow. know where they are. Let me try to find them. What's uh, I've Harry. Saw one swimming about before. Is that if, the if, one if, you sold me that digs to the centre of the earth? No, that isn't a clown pleco, I don't think. <laughs> if you see. Yeah. Oh, wait, is it a clown pleco actually? I don't think. It looks similar. Yeah. If you if you search how much they are back home, because I, These I only swear. only cost. Well, I sell them for ten quid. Yeah. So. I think back home they're a bit more of an expensive fish. Yeah, clown pleco. Is it a clown pleco? Yeah. yeah. It's oh, okay. About twenty five thirty. Ah. Wow. Yeah, so really not that expensive, but yet really beautiful, like a nice alternative to like well, a. Uh, nice when you see them. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing. We're all plecos, of course. Yeah. We're all plecos, but. That could be like a nice alternative to like a standard bristlenose pecker, for instance. Yeah. yeah. You you you, you, you have a bit of a phobia. This like the, the a dentoid yeah. a dentoids yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, moving over to here then, we've got again a mixture of rams. We've got the golden rams, which are looking really nice. I think they're super underrated golden rams yeah. there because they're so beautiful, honestly, and I yes, think they're just, a lot more hard. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's the thing. So sometimes it really depends where you are in the world because I hear from some people that uh, with them, golden rams are like really terrible, like quality, mm. and then like German blues are better. And sometimes it's the other way around. And I found here the goldens look really good. Like, mm, yeah. It's really nice, nice and thick and healthy. And they're not even fully mature either, which is great. No, you know, they, they get even a bit, you know, chunky and stuff. And then in with them, I've also got the electric blue ones, yeah. which I actually also got for a customer. Um, yet, really nice as well. Um, good, decent quality, I would say. Yeah. They still have to grow out, of course, but um, yeah, just a really nice fish as well. Um, and then with them, I just got the sword tails. Um, penguin tetra. Yeah, penguin tetra. Exactly. We call them, actually, we hockey, call them hockey stick hockey tetras. Stick. Yeah, I've, I've heard yeah. that in the States as well. Yeah. It's, I, I think hockey stick makes more sense because yeah. it does look like a hockey stick. Yeah, I don't don't, I don't know, know where, where the penguin, penguin come from. I don't know. I, I really don't know. Um, anyway, and then some Siamese algae eaters, which are they look like the hockey sticks. This yeah. one right here. Yeah. Um, Same colour, but the penguins are chasing them actually. Yeah, it's uh, sometimes they. Because they look similar, maybe. Look similar, yeah. Maybe. So Rain that's fire um, you know in there. And, and then, then I guess we go down here. Plant planted. This is just my plant oh, storage. My knees. <laughs> just get this out. Um, yeah, I just keep my. So a lot. Of, I usually get questions about how I keep my plants. Really simple, actually. It's just a layer of water in the bottom. Then put your plants in. Have a good lid, and then spray them like once a day, once every two days. They'll be fine. And um, this way, I don't have any issues with like plants oh, melting yeah. and transitioning like while they're with me so the plants stay longer like good for longer which is good in like a retail setting um 
So, but even if you're like at home, just saving some plants for an aquascape, and you don't want them to start transitioning quite yet, you know, you could just keep them like this. So um, you've got some good ones there as well. Obviously, uh, po uh, pogo stem and health area. Fairy, yeah. And then um, uh, bulbitis. Bulbitis, yeah. yeah. You've got. Yeah. Yeah, you've got all the stuff that people yeah the love standard back on. standard stuff really and then in there I've got more epiphytes um, and some echinodoruses things like that mm -hmm. um, sometimes I'll have more plants sometimes less plants it really depends and like also the type of plants it just depends how many I sell and which are popular because sometimes sometimes you have like same with fish actually you'll have seasons where you sell a lot of fish and then you'll have seasons where you'll sell like hardly any fish and yeah and like more plants and it really depends so it's always a little tricky figuring out when and why and how it's usually funny though um once people have been paid like around the 20th to the 30th of the month yeah that's when you'll sell more because people have got money to spend exactly yeah so, <laughs> that usually happens but uh but yeah so um found that when i was filming earlier i had the camera down here so i'm having to oh. get on level <laughs> i think i'm a little taller yeah <laughs> slightly slightly um goldies anyway yeah some just some goldfish over here um just just standard goldfish this was just a little fun kind of experiment i guess just to see because they were in stock and i thought like i'll just order some see how they sell they haven't sold very well i've got to say um, it's interesting because so. they're quite pretty to be fair yeah yeah but it, there again like i've said before seasonal also but also here in the netherlands like to keep fish in bowls is oh goldfish in bowls is just a no-go really like mm. not many shops or good shops like well no good shops will tell you to do that and there's only sometimes like some pet shops that will tell you maybe um but yeah like so if you wanted to keep goldfish people would then have like a big four foot tank with yeah nice so it's a lot more of a specialist and, fish yes. here would you say yeah that's interesting yeah so i don't know once i get sell these then i'll just probably leave it for yeah. what it is and yeah move on but it's I, I do like just having them and even putting like a stream on people like watching it because they are just so cool, you know, moving around. So derpy and they, they've, yeah. they've got a funny behaviour. That's yeah. why, again, goldfish yeah. to this day are yeah. most popular fish. You know, and that's that's the thing. I, I usually have a lot of people. I actually have quite a few people then they come in and they want to like mix goldfish with like neon tetras or like uh. with tropical fish. And like, I would not do it personally because they get way bigger and like it just doesn't really work out. You of know? course. Um, so I would not advise that. <laughs> um, ATO. But... Then here, this last tank, um, I, well, this was actually what I was talking about, the angelfish eggs. Ah, you probably you've will got the not be able blue. to see, but the methylene blue, if I put a light on there. On yeah, the wow, leaf, that's a lot of eggs. You can see all those eggs. Big clutch. Um, so hopefully those will hatch and then I can breed some more angels. Uh, we'll have to see about that. Um, but then for the rest in here, we've just got some Amano shrimp. That's basically all I have. Yeah. Um, which sell also quite well sometimes. Again, there's seasons for them. It's great Let's for planter tanks. There. There's some on the wood and I'm sure on the filter. On the glass, yeah, yeah I can see, yeah. And so, you know, those are pretty cool as well, for sure. Um, well, and that's pretty much it out here. Apart from uh, your oh, skate then, tank well, there for your customer. This tank, this is Video be in there. Video the description is in yeah video is already out on how i built this just a really simple beginner tank some people will say like you call that a beginner tank like that's more like professional aquascape yeah but it's actually really simple it's just a bit of gravel it's a piece of wood with a, a plant on it and then a few plants planted around a little filter heater light done and these are sets you can buy so this is like a, a set really is not that expensive actually it's the Superfish Tropical 30 start. Yeah. Um, you can get it in, a, I mean, maybe not in the US, but like in Europe, you can get it like in many places. So um, yeah, you know, really nice tank to start you out with. And well, it's yeah. really nice. Well, you've got the full breakdown anyway <laughs> on it, I think in your video for sure. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and then you've got one more thing to show. Yeah. yeah. Right, so 
this is then the big display tank. This is a Dual Rio 450. Yeah. Um, dimensions are basically 150, so 1 meters 50 by 50 deep and I think 66 high. Um, I mean, I just got a community tank in here, all different types of fish, uh, you know, some angel fish, some corys, uh, rummy nose tetra, which are a bit shy because the lights have only just turned on in the back. Um, also, well, some cleanup crew, like some autos and some algae eaters and whatnot. Um, and a nice rainbow shark here, which is really nice and can grow out lovely. How many fish would you say in here? Ooh, well, if we do a quick count, we have seven angels. We have 30 rummy noses, so 37, 38, 39, 40, I guess about 60, no, 70. 70 fish, I would say. Mm -hmm. Sem about 70 fish, that's including everything. Um, and it's just, yeah, really nice tank, you know, just aquascape this in a fairly simple way, not too complicated, this ma massive piece of wood, which is really nice, which would have been expensive, but I had a guy who was a customer who wanted to get rid of all the wood, um, and he sold it to me for like really cheap, which was quite nice. Yeah. Because a piece like this would, it cost him about a hundred euros, yeah. and I got all of the wood for like 50 euros, so... Wow. Um, that was a bargain because all this wood. And... So really nice. Um, I see that the quarries have dug out a little cave there. Yeah, um... they, they have. They've kind of made it their own. They've dug out a bit of the gravel and over here. Like, so I just let them do what they want to do, really. Um, it's Yeah, it's just a really simple tank. A few pieces of wood, a few plants. Um, I mean, the build videos on the channel, so you can find them somewhere. I really like this. This is my German Blue Ram male. Mm -hmm. Really nice big chunky one. Yeah. Nothing compared to the ones you saw in the. Uh, yeah, fishing. he's he's a lot lot yeah. bigger. There's oh, a female. Here you go. There's a female as well, but I don't know where she is. Somewhere. She's probably in a oh, cave like protecting eggs. There at the in the scent from this angle, you can just about see her head. Oh yeah, I can see her poking there. Yeah, yeah, there you can see. Yeah, she's high. Um, so also pretty nice, you know, a bit less color, but still. Nice, ne nevertheless. Um, all these angels are bred by myself as well. So these are all offspring from my pairs that I had. Um, and now we've actually had these two pair up. So the eggs you saw were from these two. Oh, wow. They okay. laid them on a Nubia sleeve just by here. So that was yesterday. Wow. Um, so they've paired up already. They're still quite young, though. So I'm like, how... Sometimes it's like, how is it possible? But they are still quite young because they can get a bit bigger, you know. Yeah. Um, but overall, you know, nice tank. We've got some nice filters under here because people will ask about Ooh, that. A big Eheim. Eheim Professional 4 Plus 600. Um, and then I've also got the Eheim Professional 4 Plus 250, just Ooh. as a little extra. Running a bit of a and CO2. And CO2. There. This is a CO2 reactor from Colombo. Um, basically, it's like you make your own CO2 with two packets. Really nice system, actually. It's the only uh, have time to turn on, nothing is coming yet, but um, um, yeah, really good system. And that's pretty much everything for filtration. Just a simple 300 watt heater. So nothing too complicated there really. Um, and overall, yeah, I don't know much. Well, the standard lighting that came with the dual uh, kit. And uh, that's, that's about it, I, I'd say. How long's the tank been running for though? Uh, so since my birthday, so about five, well actually with this scape only about two months. Before oh. that I had just the bare bottom because I just grown so out some fish. But yeah. like this, only about two months. So this is about two months in. Um, so still a lot of plants still need to like adjust, like the Anubias still have to, like new leaves are coming through and then those old leaves will die off eventually. Mm -hmm. uh, same with the crypts here, there's new things coming through. and. Things just have to grow in even more. Like you can see this Liliops is already spreading kind of, sending out a few runners. So give this tank another year or whatever and it'll look really good, I think. Maybe I'll have to, maybe I want to change some plants. I just have to see. I don't have much red in here at the moment. Yeah. So maybe add some red plants at a later date, but we'll have to see. It's really low maintenance. I really haven't done any maintenance on it. Like I've got, it's like hardly no algae. 
like on the glass, no algae. I haven't scrubbed this glass for this video or whatever. But wow. Literally just pl trim the plants. That's it. Um, tiny bit of BBA on the wood, but really not big of an issue. I and see that the see shark is he's hard already, at work. Yeah, yeah, he's hard at work. So, um, but I only run six hours of lighting on this, so I only have the li light on for six hours. Wow. Um, and then quite high amounts of CO two, uh, and then good filtration makes for a good balance and the nutrients under this capping layer is also quite a lot so you know if you have a good balanced tank it should be all right and you'll have quite nice results I would say. beautiful yeah. well, great stuff anyway uh, hopefully we get to see you have your own full open full store on. in the next few years maybe, as you maybe said the next time you come around uh, we'll have like a whole shop you know and That'd be really cool. You're on route there for sure. Yeah. Hundred percent. Well, uh, thanks a lot for letting us uh, yeah. pay a visit and see your no beautiful problem. home and uh, tanks and shop yeah. too. So yeah, no problem. Well, uh, all the best and uh, we'll uh, be leaving the links to JT's channel in the yeah. description as well to the video mm -hmm. and also the channel itself. Yeah. Obviously to Harry as well, guest appearance. He'll be talking soon in his videos. Don't worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, uh, thanks a lot for watching everyone. Anyway, we've had a great little talk here, great little tour. And um, quite a long one, but I'm sure it'll be worth the watch anyway, for sure. So take it easy. See you later and peace.